Negative earnings today from 3M and Pfizer and the spreading of the coronavirus and the death toll rising. Stocks are up today. So I have to ask you, Jonathan, what is with the up day? Way to start with all the good news, right? Yes. <laughs> um, listen, I, th I think we've seen um, on a very short period of time a washout yesterday in our markets. Hit it pretty significantly. The one thing I did like about yesterday was that we opened on the relatively lows and the market stayed flat for most of the day. Yes, there was a little bit of a shift, but we didn't see the market open and then immediately spike down or halfway through the day try to rally back and didn't. So that flat line there just showed me a little bit of a base, a little bit of a bottom. A couple of you know obscure positive headlines about the virus in China might have helped our markets midday today. We saw a nice little 10-point swing up uh, about an hour and a half ago. But I think right now everyone's trying to figure out you know what's the implications here. And I even had this conversation with my with one of my daughters last night. We were talking about the virus, and she said, "Why would the market get hit so hard because of the virus headlines?" So I think people are still trying to figure that out and and, and see how it all plays out. Put that aside, we have our normal headlines. Uh, we're going through our economic calendar. We're going through earnings season. Impeachment is on TV 24-7. No one's really talking about China tariffs that much. We probably should bring that back into the mix. Uh, interest rates, we have you know, Fed tomorrow. Uh, we'll get some comments there. And you know, Brexit's uh, the other thing that's going on. So there's still a lot that's happening. You know, I, 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 was so, I was so optimistic in the beginning of this interview. You know, you did mention we, we did have good economic data today. Uh, do you believe these numbers coming out of China? Uh, look, I think uh, it, it's, it's something that you know, we have to kind of grasp. But the uncertainty of what's happening across the board, both U.S. and, you know, geopolitical stuff, it's hard to really, you know, hang your hat on these numbers right now. We're going to have to wait to see how things play out. I mean, we, we talk about it with, um, you know, tariffs, you know, moving in the right direction. But what does that really mean a month, a quarter, a year down the road? We see our economic data here. Our economic data, you know, on a longer term basis is showing our, our economy has grown and, and continues to expand at what rate we're going to have to see. And then I think from China point of view, um, you know, what's happening there is, is obviously very unique. And we just don't know the ripple effects. We don't know the implications of where this is going to go until we get that headline that, you know, things are under control. And, and we're not we're not close to that yet. Now you did also mention the Fed. We do have some more dovish voting members this year. Do you have any predictions on a rate cut, rate steady or or rate hike? Uh, you know, I think I might have had a different answer to that question a week ago. Um, I, I think right now, um, you know, the major headlines that we have discussed, currently and continue to discuss, nothing has really shifted there. So that so the Fed feels somewhat comfortable there. But this, you know, coronavirus headlines is clearly something, once again, that we just haven't been able to grasp and, and wrap our hands around, right? The headlines keep shifting back and forth. How this plays out is going to be, you know, something that we're going to watch. And the Fed always likes to find excuses, right, to, to delay, to pause, to, uh, um, you know, be, continue to be, you know, data dependent or headline dependent. So I think they they're not going to say it, but they might use this just internally as a way to say, hey, look, we've got this, you know, this this epidemic that's happening. How is it going to play out? How how is this going to affect everyone in the in the world? Right? Um, let's let's kind of take it easy for now. Jerome Powell checks his direct messages if Trump is in there saying, make sure you cut those rates. Yeah, I, you know, I'm sure I'm sure there have been some uh, indirect messages that have been there. I mean, actually, probably some very direct messages. I'm sure. Yeah, very yeah, direct very messages. Direct. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Great having you on the floor. That is Jonathan Corpina from Meridian Equity Partners here at the New York Stock Exchange.